everybody. Welcome back to Aya Pottery. My name is Adelie, and I have another kiln to unload tonight, so I thought I would go ahead and bring you along again. Um, I'm hoping at some point, if I keep doing videos, I will have some more content, some other maybe things, tips that I can give you that we haven't already gotten, maybe from John the Potter. I don't know. I'm going to brainstorm that when things slow down after the holidays. But I have another kiln to unload. It's mostly bigger platters, so there's not a ton in here. But, I, I, oh, 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 that is beautiful. All right, here we go. This platter is the first one. Ooh, I've got some of my little spacers. I was a little afraid that this was gonna run off, and for good reason, right there. But I got lucky. So I use these little, they're just little squares of clay um, that I put my stuff up on just to be safe. That is pretty. A couple of glass coasters that I think would have done better in the bottom. They don't look that great and they needed a little bit more glass, but I can always fire those. One other one, that one's okay. This is the biggest platter I've done. I am actually waiting for some Hydrobats 14 inch to come in at my local pottery store. Um, and so I did this on just a, a plastic larger bat and always had problems with it being like too thin or um, not using enough clay. But I put extra of my floating blue here because it was turning out kind of green. And I'm really happy with it. That is very cool. I don't know, I would say that's 13 inches, 12 and a half inches, something like that. Awesome. Very pretty. The rest of this is mostly all ornaments. And I did tell John the Potter that I would make him a ornament, and there it is. And I'm going to send that out. It's finished, and I think it looks pretty cool. Wood grain. I hope you like it, John. All right. The rest of these things are all um, just raw clay ornaments with a little black in it. This one's going to be a magnet because it doesn't have a hole. Um, and then a little snowflake. And that's another snowflake. A little snowflake on the side with some trees. This one just has trees. And then I have a bunch in here that say Merry Christmas. And I do have um, 2018 on the back so that um, they know which year they bought it. I think I did some without that, so maybe I'll pull those out last if they don't sell so I can always use them another year. But I wanted some little cheap items to be able to sell, like uh, a magnet like this that could be generic and used all year long and could be an, a little gift, um, so that there'd be a lot of options at the bazaar for people to buy. You know, things that aren't too expensive, um, but you know, because a lot of people I've heard at, um, at pottery shows find, think that homemade pottery or handmade pottery, this art that we do, the pieces can be pretty expensive and, um, I just want there to be an option for somebody who maybe can't afford a $25 mug or a 40 or $50 vase. I'm still hoping there's going to be quite a few that can purchase those expensive whoo, items. We shall see. Here's another bowl slash platter. I really like that. Put spacers on that too, just in case, but we didn't need it. We did good. I'm very happy with that. Oh, I did have some more glass coasters, and I'm happy with, let's say, three of them. One didn't have any enough. And you know, I wish there was a way like, okay, if one's a little bigger, one's a little smaller to know exactly how much glass to put. Maybe I should weigh it next time. And then if they're good, then I know for sure that weight of glass is enough. Oh, I made these. These are called secret 
salt shakers. So they have a little uh, funnel on the inside and then you make an enclosed form on top and you're supposed to be able to put salt in there and then I guess you shake it and the salt comes up and drops out. So I guess you can use it for pepper too. Um, so I made a couple sets of those. Those turned out pretty cute. There's a set there. Here, let me give you a, a better view of the other one. So I was thinking like pepper and salt. Mixing them up like that. I did, oh cool, also um, have some really dark clay from my local Georgie's that I needed to finish using. I had like a little bit left and I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some sets. And I wanted some of the clay to show because it's so dark. And so I put the metallic green on it and I really like it. That like came out to being like, if you can really see in here, there's kind of a glare, but there's this variegation in here just by itself, it looks rad. Like some of that brown or whatever is coming out inside of it or something. That's so cool. You know, I may buy more of that dark brown clay because that looks pretty cool. And I knew that that green kind of runs a little bit, so I made sure to leave some extra space. Um, and I did really expect like a, a exact line um, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty cool. All right, let's get down here and see what we got. Oh, oh, oh my. Okay, I'm, okay, okay. So I had made this bowl a long time ago, one of my very first bowls, okay, before I show you this. And it turned out looking really cool. And I had a hard time replicating it because I didn't take the greatest notes back then. But this was Clayscapes pottery that uh, glazes that I used, and I wanted to do some bowls that were raw on the outside and just glazed on the inside. So I thought that this look that I was going for would be perfect. So this is Starry Night first, then Coastal Blue, and then Cream Streaks, all from Clayscapes uh, glazes. And I got I made four of those, and they all look almost exactly the same. They all came out so cool. I am like so happy with this load. That's not what I, I mean, this glaze load. I hope that didn't sound weird. So. I think I had a little swirl down there. That was like so perfect. I'm getting lucky. I'm going to be doing lots of glaze loads though. Wait, because I, uh, I need to get some stuff done. Okay, so this is a mixing bowl. And I saw this on Pinterest somebody made this little handle so it's not gonna stick out and it can nest inside other bowls but yet you still can pretty much fill up uh, whatever you're mixing up till like here you know what I mean and then it's got the little spout I thought that was a great idea and so you know that's where we get inspiration from other artists obviously I get inspiration from other artists um, but a few of my own things like that piece like this is my own, well, I mean, it's all my own, but it's, you know, derived from somewhere. So here's a smaller one of that. I made a, a bigger one that's not glazed yet, but I just put matte white on this because I thought, you know, you want, if you're mixing something up, you want simple colors. And I'm digging it. All right. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. This just has green on it. These are more of those... Uh, salt and pepper shakers, secret salt and pepper shakers, and oh, so pretty. This is my JD Teal, and you know what? I am really happy with this stuff right now. Extremely happy. So thanks for watching. Um, probably have another glaze on or kiln unloading in a few days. I really want to throw some stuff. I gotta figure out how to edit. I mean, I've, I've said this before, but I really do because I wanna do like some sped up, like um, throwing videos and, and stuff like that. But like I said, after the holidays, there'll be more. I made these little, um, these are out of porcelain. I'm gonna glaze them. They are like little pestle and mortars. I have a little one that I use when I have to like crush up medicine for my son and mix it in his applesauce or, you know, cold medicine they don't wanna eat or, you know, things like that. Uh, so I made 
a couple of those and hopefully they turn out. And I will see you next time.